It's Stuart Models Beam Engine Rebuild and this is part 3, making a new crank web using an old Stuart casting with a problem. A few years ago, using the auction site that we all know and love called eBay, I bought these. It's a box of random Stuart castings. I've added to the box over the years. I didn't buy all of these on eBay. In fact, I don't know how the jigsaw blade got in there. In the box are all manner of Stuart castings. Most of them are gunmetal castings. Some eccentrics for a 5A, a water pump for a 5A, and quite a lot of the castings are for a Stuart beam engine, including the beam that you saw at the beginning of the clip. And there's also one of these. This is called an Oliver, and it's a brass part from my traction engine. A friend of mine used to make these for much larger traction engines than the small one I have, and it's fascinating to watch them beam made. He used a blowtorch, a piece of square brass, a vice, and like a big tap wrench. He went along the bar, heating it up, and just twisted it into this shape. This requires considerable practice and skill. This is a steering wheel for a model ship. I wonder where that had gone. At the moment I'm stalling because I cannot find the part in this box that I know is in there. Then suddenly I saw the part that I need. It was behind a Stuart water pump casting. There it is in the bottom of the box. Yes, it's still in there. That's a good thing. It's not a big problem buying one of these parts from Stuart models, but I thought, well, I have one, I may as well use it. And this is a very old casting. They don't make them like this anymore. The modern Stuart crank webs for these type of engines are made from cast iron, and they are slightly different, but this one will be fine. I'm now in the outer part of the workshop, and I'm using the one-inch belt sander to clean up the casting. I want to be able to hold this part in a three-jaw chuck. Yes, I said three-jaw chuck, because normally a part like this would be made in a four-jaw chuck. In no time at all, the casting sprue is removed, and it's now starting to look like a crank web casting. When you clean up castings, don't be too ambitious. Leave some for the lathe tool to remove. In the past, when I've been cleaning up castings, sometimes I've removed too much metal and regretted it. I'm just checking the dimensions. This needs to be 3 eighths of an inch, and the end part needs to be a quarter of an inch thick. So thankfully, there's a generous amount of metal available. Before I start to machine the casting, I'm just going to check the dimensions of the crankshaft. And yes, it's still 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. As I mentioned earlier, I could have used a four-jaw chuck for this job, but I prefer to do it the easy way. I've made quite a few crank webs like this, and what I didn't show clearly was, when I cleaned it up on the belt sander, I made sure that the end part that goes in the chuck was quite round. Before I start the lathe, I'm using a lathe tool across the front of the crank web to make sure that it's in the right position. If the lathe tool is just touching the part all the way along, then everything's fine. Try it, you'll really be amazed how easy it is, and if you wanted to be really picky you could use a cigarette paper between the lathe tool and the casting, or even a feeler gauge. When doing a job like this, two things are essential. One, you need a really sharp lathe tool, and two, only take the finest of cuts because the crank web is not securely held in the chuck. If you do try and take too big a cut, you could just destroy the part that you're working on. So my advice is take it easy. This is a second pass. I've speeded up the video to make the whole process take a little less time. I don't machine any more of this crank web, otherwise it will be too weak, and look at the front face. There's quite a large blowhole in the casting. You often get blowholes in castings, it's just the way it is. Most of them are okay though. But this one, out of my box of old castings, is not. So I'm going to attempt to repair it. First of all though, I need to drill out the blowhole, just to clean it up thoroughly so I can silver solder it and the Proxon motor tool comes in useful one more time. Now it looks worse than it did, but at least the hole is pretty clean. As you can see from the clip, there's still a little bit of shale in there, and that shouldn't be too much of a problem, because this repair is not structural. Time now to apply a generous coating of flux into the hole. This is Easy Flow number 2 flux. Now it's time to warm it up. Once again, this part of the video is speeded up, but it's not speeded up to save time. I want to show what happens to the flux. Never apply the silver solder to the joint, or in this case, the hole, until this special flux is fully molten and takes on a very watery appearance. If you look very closely at the flux bubble, you will see that it keeps popping. That's because the blow hole goes a little bit deeper than I first thought. I would not normally do a job like this. All I would do is get in touch with Stuart Models and order a new casting. But I thought, well, it will make a good video. The work is now at the correct temperature, like a dull red, so I'm applying some silver solder which flashes into the hole, and just to make sure that I've got it, I put a bit more on. And now it's time to leave the part until it cools to black. 
Don't ever be tempted to quench the part in water, which I am going to do in a moment, until it's fully black. Quenching silver solder when it's still red hot causes it to take on a crystalline appearance and you don't want this. The part is now cool enough, so it's into my pot of water and the mess on the top is spray paint residue. Before proceeding any further, I'm using the 4 inch belt sander to clean up the front face. What I need to do is make sure that there aren't any more holes in the silver solder. And after this job, it now looks like this. Not perfect, but life seldom is. Back inside the inner part of the workshop where it's a bit warmer, it's back in the lathe. And I'm taking one final finishing cut across the front of it. Before I did this, I aligned it with the lathe tools I've shown previously. This is the critical final cut, which coincidentally is the same name as my video editor. At this stage, I would just like to say if you're doing a job like this, always remember, once you've taken the final cut, do not take the part out of the chuck to have a look at it, because the next job is drilling a hole for the crankshaft, and this needs to be at a perfect 90 degrees to the front face. I'll be showing how I finish this job in the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.